Hello everyone, my name is Adam Cross and I'm a licensed marriage family therapist in California. And today I want to talk to you about inner critics and inner neglectors. A huge shout out I want to give to um, Souls and Hearts and Dr. Peter Malinowski and Jerry Crete. You know, you may have seen them. I know Dr. Jerry uh, Crete is, uh, has been on Matt Frads, uh, Pints with Aquinas a few times. I did a previous interview with, with both Dr. Peter and Dr. Jerry on, on this channel. Um, and so, you know, the past year or so, I've really been just kind of absorbing a lot of what they've been providing. Um, I know, um, they've both been on the restore the glory podcast with, uh, Jake Cam and Bob shoots, who are also great influences of mine. Dr. Peter and Dr. Jerry have been talking a lot about parts work. So maybe that's already in your vocabulary. Maybe you've already seen that, but there's a lot of great work looking at how we can integrate our Catholic faith with understanding that there are parts of us. And I'm not going to do like an overview of parts work because there's a ton of great resources, but I do want to talk about two things briefly in this video that have to do with parts of us that we may encounter or experience. And so these are parts that I see come up a lot with my clients in therapy, and they're good to be able to name for ourselves. One of these things to consider is that there can be a part of us that is very critical of us, right? And you can kind of think of this as maybe a critical voice in your head, or maybe you have like an inner critic, like a, a voice or a part of you that is critiquing and commenting on everything you do. Uh, maybe it's annoying. Maybe it's really negative, right? It could be that negative self-talk that you have, right? So you have an inner critic that might be there. You might also have an inner neglector or an inner dismisser. Someone who is, again, like that negative voice that's saying, your feelings don't matter or your needs don't matter, or you should be able to get over this, or this shouldn't be an issue, right? So a voice, again, negative self-talk, that's really neglecting or dismissing your needs and your emotions. So we can have inner critics, we can have inner neglectors and dismissers, um, and these parts are really good to, to notice about ourselves. And the thing that I've been learning and doing some trainings with internal family systems and, um, and parts work is that we get an inner critic, right? We're not born with an inner critic. Babies don't come out of the womb thinking, wow, you're pretty terrible. Why do you need your mom so much, right? We, we don't think that way. We just, we just rely on mom, right? Rely on dad. But as we grow, we develop critics. We develop neglectors. And those can be from experiences of woundedness. And so we get an inner critic when we experience or encounter an external critic. One of the examples I've heard, which I think is really helpful is, you know, if someone has an alcoholic father and this father gets drunk and talks to their son and says, you're a terrible son, you're lazy, you're good for nothing, right? And that son experiences that criticism out of woundedness, right, of the father. But that son then develops an inner critic and says, don't be lazy, show, your, show yourself, show dad that you are worth something. Right. Show him that you are a good son or maybe show him that you don't need him. Right. And so that voice can then be calling out everything the son says right in the son's head. He has he now has an inner critic that might sound or look like dad that says, don't be lazy. Get up. Do this thing. Be better. Why? Because he doesn't want to feel how he felt when dad was criticizing him. So now a part of him has kind of taken that on to protect him. I'm going to protect you from dad's verbal abuse. And so I'm going to call stuff out so that dad never does. And that kid grows up and he leaves home, but he now still has that inner critic. That sounds like dad, right? That inner critic is trying to help, trying to protect him from dad, but maybe it's harsh. Maybe it's actually more like dad or even worse than dad. Um, and it's actually causing a lot of stress. So part of healing is addressing that inner critic. It's addressing where that critic came from and the hurt that might be behind that critic. That inner critic may be afraid. I don't want you to feel lazy or terrible like a bad son ever again. So I'm always going to point out when there's issues. So we have to address that critic. We also have to have to address the pain or the party that's carrying that pain, right? That hurt, that woundedness behind the critic. And in a lot of parts work and a lot of different types of therapy, there can be that kind of that parent child dynamic where it's there. It's like an inner parent who might need some parenting classes. It might be kind of mean who's saying, be better, get up, do this. You're lazy. Right. 
and is kind of talking to that inner child. No matter how old you are, there could be an inner child, right? Your child self or child part of you that is really struggling or carrying a sense of shame or fear or hurt, right? That just has good desires, right? That wants to be loved. And so we can address these parts of us that might come up. Right? You also have the inner neglector, the inner dismisser, right? And if you have a parent, um, you've encountered an external neglector. If you have a parent who's told you, just get up, shake it off, right? It's like, oh, my leg's broken. You're fine. Just get up, and shake it off, right? Kind of that, you know, extreme version of, of a neglector or dismisser. But a parent who's going to dismiss how you're feeling or neglect to take care of you. You don't need dinner, right? Just eat tomorrow, right? You need to lose weight anyways. Then same thing with the inner critic. We, as we encounter an external neglector, can develop an internal neglector. So for the rest of our lives, we can really be telling us, telling ourselves, don't be sad. Why would you let that affect you? Just push through. Just keep going. You don't need to eat. Right? You don't need this thing. You don't need sleep. Just keep going. Other people have it so much worse than you. And that can even feel productive. And that can even feel like, yeah, I'm, I'm sacrificing. I'm, I'm becoming stronger. But again, that parent-child dynamic within ourselves, we can be really dismissing our needs and our feelings that are underneath the surface. So we have to examine that relationship, right? And work with these parents, these inner parents, neglectors or, or critics that might be quick to and not, not really give space to that child or that pain and that hurt and that woundedness that needs to be addressed, that God wants to address, that God wants you to participate in the healing of yourself and to show that self-compassion and to let God further into these areas. Inner critics, inner neglectors, they matter. Um, the children behind them, right, that they might be speaking to or even chastising or neglecting, they they desire our attention, right? These parts of us that are, we're carrying around with us. And God wants to help us to really encounter them and to love them as as he loves them. Um, and I'll say this last, you know, God calls us to love others as we love ourselves. How are we loving ourselves? That is the question. Do we love ourselves? Can we love these parts of us that are vulnerable, that are afraid? Can we give them compassion? Can we even give compassion to the critic who's trying to protect us or the dismisser or neglector who's, who's trying to keep us going and surviving? Can we have compassion for them and, and how they're trying to, to help us, right? But also seeking to, to understand and maybe even transform how how they do things how we relate to ourselves how we love ourselves you know all this you know parts work and, and i encourage you to keep doing that research if you're interested in internal family systems or, or or parts work but it calls us to a deeper relationship with ourselves how do we love ourselves do we love ourselves and in doing that work and seeking healing there we're better able to love others and we're better able to love god too you don't have to do any of this alone right god is helping you god is giving you the grace and God might be really encouraging you to seek out a therapist and a spiritual director and even just friends to check in with and look to for support. Hope this video helps. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions or comments. Leave them in, in below. Hit that like and subscribe button wherever they are. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. God bless.